Hey everyone, it's Dr. Arnold. I'm excited to announce a new segment that will be coming to the podcast, and that is the mailbag. If you have questions about COVID-19, latest technologies and procedures, and other services provided at Point Health Cedar Rapids, or even other general medical topics, uh, you can now submit those questions uh, to me, and they may be answered on uh, the podcast. To submit your questions, go to unipoint.org backslash mailbag. That's unitypoint.org slash mailbag, M-A-I-L-B-A-G. Please note that the mailbag is certainly not an alternative to a medical appointment. Any questions about personal symptoms or conditions need to be directed to your primary care provider or an urgent care. And as always, in the case of an emergency, uh, dial 911 or present to the nearest emergency room. Once again, you can submit your questions to me at unipoint.org backslash mailbag. That's unipoint.org backslash mailbag, M-A-I-L-B-A-G. I look forward to hearing from you our amazing listeners. This is Live Well Talk on COVID-19. I'm Dr. Dustin Arnold, Chief Medical Officer at UniPoint Health, St. Luke's Hospital. In today's podcast, I'll give an update on vaccines and boosters, as well as the concern about what influence them, what influence the influenza season will have, uh, and whether or not we'll have a twindemic is the term that the uh, the press is, uh, is uh, distributing. Uh, also, I'm going to talk about the new pill from Merck that might be an oral treatment a pill to take uh, to cut hospitalization and deaths. The initial study says that it can cut them in half. And we'll also mention natural immunity. Uh, but to, let's start off as we always do about what we are seeing here in the hospital. And for the most part, it is that persistent plateau that we've seen for uh, over a month now, uh, where the number of discharges and admissions for COVID-19 are balanced. Uh, about 20% of the population of the hospital is COVID-19. Uh, so that means the other 80% is not. And of those COVID-19, anywhere from 75 to 80% are unvaccinated. And observably and measurably, the unvaccinated are more likely to be in the intensive care unit than they are not to. Once again, that has given us definitive evidence that the vaccines do moderate illness and prevent death. Uh, as well as significant uh, disability following the infection. Uh, so there is some, there is protection with the uh, vaccine, and I continue to encourage everyone to, to be vaccinated. But one of the trending topics that came out last week was the twindemic, whether or not influenza and COVID would, um, how those two viruses would act together. One optimistic thing that we're seeing is that the north, the southern hemispheres, who their flu season is ending, uh, did not have a significant flu season. Uh, but the epidemiologists do speak of the possibility of having what's called a compensatory second season where you have kind of a rebound from the previous uh, season. Uh, and, and to put things in perspective, influenza causes uh, about anywhere from 12,000 to 50,000 deaths each year. Uh, we've Each year we've had more and more patients vaccinated uh, rate, which uh, does decline the number of cases and it has a positive influence on that. Uh, but uh, the possibility of both influenza and COVID occurring at the same time or a COVID patient recovering and only to get influenza, that's a distinct possibility. Uh, I've said before and I've, others have made this observation that at some level the uh, social distance and the masking perhaps last year did influence uh, the um, influenza season and, and we'll hope that continues this year because we are continuing to recommend masking and social distancing, particularly if your community is in high transmission, which uh, Lynn County continues to be high transmission with some indices moving us into moderate. So that's good news. Uh, the other good news that we're seeing is that the um, shedding of the virus in the water supply has continued to uh, decline for uh, two straight weeks. That's a great uh, observation. And also, I think uh, the number of patients active cases has continued to go down this week, meaning if you have three buckets of patients, you have susceptible, infected, and recovered. We are having more people leave the infected and going into the recovered category than are going from the susceptible to infected. And that's 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 a very good sign, and I hope that's a sustained observation. In the news this week, coming up will be the uh, FDA um, having meetings uh, to consider whether or not a booster uh, is needed for Moderna and the J&J &J vaccine, and that's to happen uh, later this week. 
uh, the, the FDA always they have kind of an unusual meeting schedule. It's usually on Thursdays and Fridays, and they even meet on Sundays. But uh, I believe it's uh, this Thursday and Friday that they're going to consider the booster for Moderna in J and J. And Pfizer has made an has requested uh, amendment to their emergency use authorization to go down to ages five and from go down from 12 to five years of age for that. And that meeting will occur later this month and more to come on that when it does come along. You know, one of the questions that I get a lot uh, is about natural immunity. Um, and I, I think over time and it'll be only over time that we'll determine just what degree of natural immunity does provide. If you remember several podcasts ago, we talked to the Cleveland Clinic study where they found that uh, that people that had COVID-19 did not necessarily need a vaccine afterwards because they had protection from that. And at that time, it was up to six months protection. And now it looks like it can be at, at least up to a year. That needs to be peer reviewed, of course. But but that does provide some evidence to support natural immunity, which is always a good thing. But again, at the if you've had COVID-19 and you should get the vaccine, there, there may be a bonus that that vaccine may provide some additional protection for the Delta variant uh, in certain circumstances. So uh, it, even if you've had it and you're high risk, it, it is worth your uh, your health to to become vaccinated uh, as it will have a degree of protection that may not otherwise be present. I, I, I can I can tell you two things about natural immunity and about vaccines. The hospital is not being overrun with patients they're having COVID a second time, which tells me that natural immunity does provide some protection. And the hospital is not being overrun with people having side effects to the vaccine, uh, which tells me that the vaccines are safe. And I think those two things are take home uh, that can be uh, uh, assured. That those are two points that I can assure confidently uh, are afoot. And I continue to recommend that everyone uh, uh, get vaccinated uh, or choose to be vaccinated. But the big news this week is the Merck has come out with uh, oral synthetic nucleotide, similar to other medication that's on the market, that uh, prevents the virus from replicating and subsequently decreasing the the, the risk of uh, infection uh, by half. And it even quoted deaths and infections by half. Now, the number of patients in that study is only about 385. Uh, in one group and 377 in the other. That's in medicine, that's pretty small. Uh, you want to see uh, in the thousands uh, to get a good number of patients to draw conclusions. And so, um, you know, we'll have to uh, wait and see on that. But it is it is encouraging uh, that it would just be something that um, would complement what we're doing with uh, uh, the vaccines and the monoclonal antibodies. Speaking of the monoclonal antibodies, we've done 321 infusions, uh, and so that's just outstanding. And uh, I can I've reviewed about 30 percent of those cases, and none of that 30 percent, none of none of those patients were subsequently admitted to the hospital. Now that is a small number. I'll continue to review all of them, uh, but I think that I'm very uh, optimistic that that monoclonal antibody is uh, helping our patients and our communities. The supply chain whether it's uh, in the supermarket or elsewhere, uh, is strained. Uh, I think in the, the, the news, there's been the, um, the, the remarks about the shipping containers uh, out in California and the inability to unload these ships. So we're all feeling the crunch in the supply chain. But there's one supply that we can influence and influence that positively, and that is the blood supply. Uh, and we will be having a, a blood drive uh, coming up uh, December 13th uh, here at St. Luke's. And uh, if you're a hospital employee, I, I encourage you to make arrangements to donate at that time. More information will be coming out. And if you're a community member, uh, I do encourage you to go to the local uh, blood bank uh, to provide a donation because we have seen the blood bank uh, challenged uh, during the pandemic with uh, donations. And so call that out to uh, encourage donations. Thank you for listening to the COVID-19 update. We'll have more information next week about the FDA and their recommendations for Moderna and J&J. &J. And hopefully we'll have some more uh, uh, evidence that supports the uh, uh, oral synthetic nucleotide analog manufactured by Merck. Uh, more to come on that. I'm really optimistic. Uh, 
going back to um, I kind of grew up in medicine with the HIV and the AIDS epidemic uh, in the uh, early 90s to, to, to mid 90s. And uh, when we had pills developed that could help uh, uh, prevent replication of the virus, that was a big deal. And I'm really encouraged by uh, that possibility that Merck may have a therapeutic that we can deliver to patients early in the illness and prevent death and disability. For more information on the vaccine, COVID-19, visit unipoint.org. Thank you for listening to Live Well Talk On. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your family, friends, neighbors, strangers about our podcast. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, be well.